welcome to Up Close to Personal with your boy Thesis. Now today we've got the Taggers kit by Smowin. This, I already know how I'm gonna feel about it. Like I've already looked at it, touched it, felt it, turned it on, it is not what I wanted to see from Smowin. Basically a rehatch of the Augvape VX200, same idea, poor execution. I'm not sure how much cheaper you can get than the VX200, uh, but fucking Smowent has figured it out. So first and foremost, we got the exterior of the box. It is a slide to open. It is nothing fancy, and I mean that in a bad way. Like, not only is it not, I don't mind simplicity. I do not mind a regular old cardboard box, but at least show me that you put a little bit of effort into it. If you know Smowent and been around for a long time, you've seen Smowent kind of do these weird dips, but generally speaking, their lows are still higher than a lot of the mainstream highs. And I mean that with the, the, as a compliment. This feels like the lower end of the most mainstream devices or uh, manufacturers that exist, period. We got this little baggie with the only replaceable part on this device, and that's gonna be a disposable tank top cap. That is it. This is literally the exact same thing as something like the Nunu or the VX200 sub ohm tank kit tank that comes with that whole kit. Uh, same shit. This is the exact same shit. It feels plasticky. It's a non-replaceable drip tip. It's as plasticky and shitty as you can possibly imagine. It feels like fucking garbage. I wasn't even going to re review this kit. Like, period. I was not going to review this kit. With that said, I feel like I should let people know. This is more like a public service announcement. Let's go ahead and listen to this on the microphone. Listen to the plastic. I can imagine very few people actually taking the time to recycle these tanks. It's the least I can do. I don't want to add to the giant amount of waste that we already produce. Let's go ahead and take a listen to the dry airflow real quick. It's actually a pretty quiet, decent sounding airflow. Let's go ahead and fill this up and let it wick. And I'm going to be using my daily vape that's Ice Ice by Vape Dudes. And I use this specific liquid every single time I test the tank. Uh, for obvious reasons, it's quality control. I know exactly how this should taste. I know exactly what it should feel like. Throat hit, all that kind of good stuff. So if it alters by much, that's that's where I start to judge the device or the tank or the RDA, what have you. Bam sauce. Let's go ahead and let that wick for about three or four minutes. In the rest of the box, we got a battery warning, of course. And that's it. That's the entirety of the package. Let's go ahead and set this aside. This is where you lose me. It's period. I don't understand. I, I genuinely do not get the appeal of a device like this. I know I was talking to a couple of the reviewers uh, and they were saying that they liked light devices, they liked plastic devices, they don't feel it in their pocket and whatnot. Now me, I guess I'm a little bit different. I'm probably old school in the fact that I really like there to be a solid heft to my devices. Even if it's not super heavy, I wanna feel like the thing it is, is at least rigid. I open up the battery door and this is the type of shit that pisses me off. You see this, all this paint overspray, you can see where it was actually held right there, and they just painted over it. They didn't even take the time to finish painting it. That's the kind of shit that lets you know the quality of the device is absolutely atrocious. It's not even rigid enough to the point where the battery door doesn't bend. This is so easily bendable. This is not something I would ever recommend any company doing ever for any reason. This is a dual 18650 device. You do have something that I think might be gold plated, connectors, which is decent. That's not bad. Generally speaking, Smoen has pretty decent internals. Their their uh, soldering points are usually pretty good. The gauge of their cables are pretty good. But this is the kind of stuff that I know is not going to last. I mean, you drop this hard enough a couple of times, something's either going to crack or something's going to come loose. That's just the fact of the matter. Let's go and grab a couple of batteries. Now, right here, I'm using Home Tech 18650s. These are the Home Works. Go and pop these in like that. I did do a rewrap because, I mean, generally speaking, Home Tech shit sucks in terms of wraps. Pop this in, and then you do have the Smoant symbol that pops up. We're at one watt. This is about as basic bitch as you can get. It's pretty standard stainless steel 510. It feels fine. It's not bad. Let's go and see if this is spring-loaded once. Oh, shit, that is spring-loaded. I'll be completely real with you guys. The spring-loaded 510 here feels decent. It's not bad at all. Oh, no, there's crunch. So about its midway point, you can feel the crunch from that 510. Huh, that's strange. The first couple of times I pushed, I didn't feel it. Yeah, I mean, that's it's not horrible. I felt a lot worse. I've actually felt worse on more expensive mods. I'm actually kind of impressed by that 510. That's not bad. Slide this on just like that. At least she matches. I'm not a fan of the name, Smoant Tag. This is barely screen printed on there. Let's go and take a hit, guys. Let's see. This is going to be, what, 0.21 ohms. So if it's 0.21 ohms, why do they make it go by tenths? Just make it go by an entire watt. 0.21 ohms will start at 50 watts. I'm gonna go ahead and eat a little bit of crow. I am, uh, not only am I impressed with the tank, the flavor itself is very... Wow. Wow. Right now, this isn't even a competition. 
If I was ever going to recommend that VX200 tank, I forget what it's called, the VX200 disposable, the Aug Vape version, this one blows that out of water, out of the water in terms of just flavor alone. The purity of taste, I know exactly what this should taste like. I'm going to go ahead and say that's a 7.5 to an 8 in terms of accuracy of flavor. That is phenomenal. I'm, uh, for a disposable tank, I'm really impressed. I still don't recommend it. I mean, that's a shit ton of waste. I can't imagine it lasting longer than a few days to a week. But uh, granted, keep that with a grain of salt because I'm not going to test this one in terms of uh, long term. I just don't want to waste my time with it. At 50 watts, this thing is pushing out an in insane amount of airflow. This is, uh, holy fuck, I cannot believe that shit. Whoo! Real quick, some uh, facts and figures on the tank. This is a 22 millimeter uh, diameter, 36 millimeter height. This is TPD compliant as far as I know. I think it's two mils. I believe it's two milliliters on the dot with this tank. Something at 0.21 ohms at two milliliters is virtually unusable. For me, I'm going through roughly between 10 and 50 mils a day of my daily vape, depending on the day, depending on the amount of shit that I'm testing. Uh, but just, you know, as, a, as my regular routine, even if I wasn't testing liquid, I'd be still going through 25 to 30 mils a day. And in terms of two milliliters, that's just not, you know, that's not an option for me to have as a daily vape. It's pretty decent though. I'm, can't, I'm, I'm really surprised. I just crossed sort of that so easily. That's no bueno. That means that there's a lot of play inside those, those uh, threads. I, I'm super impressed with the flavor. I just am. I, I wish I wasn't just because I don't want to recommend a disposable tank to anybody. But if you were dead set on getting a disposable tank, this is the one to get. Mm. Now, I do know that the recommended wattage, I think it's between 40, 45-ish watts, if I'm remembering correctly. I'm going to go and hit this at exactly 45 watts, see what the peak feels like. Weird. That's a completely different flavor. Yeah, at 45 watts, I can start to taste this weird chemically uh, taste. Let's go ahead and hit this bitch at 40 or 55 watts. Let's see. Even better. Weirdness. That's kind of bizarre. Let's go ahead and bring it back down to 50. That seems where the sweet spot's at. I'm going to go ahead and stick with that 7.5 rating because now that I'm starting to taste that chemically flavor, it almost tastes like metal. You can taste that irony taste, almost that metal, metallic taste. That's kind of what I'm getting out of this coil. That's not good. But it's still better than that Aug Vape. The Aug Vape was pretty decent too. Uh, the Smoet, this one's still tasting a little bit better, but more importantly, the airflow to me is more accurate. Uh, not more accurate. It's more what it's more what I would prefer. I prefer a wide open airflow in terms of any sub ohm tank. It's just my preference. Okay, so let's go ahead and go through the mod real quick. This is an extremely light mod. If that's something that you're into, this is definitely going to be right up your alley. Now, last week I did the Aug Vape AIO review. I think it came out to be like 116, 116 grams. Let's go ahead and give it a test just so you guys can see the difference. Bam. 116 grams, 117 grams because it's got liquid in it. Let's go ahead and weigh this with batteries and the tank and a full tank at that. 183 grams. That's nothing. That is absolutely nothing uh, for a mod this size. I'm going to go ahead and weigh this Beaver Box mod with the gt4 on it 331 point what five grams that is the that is a, it's a giant difference and this is not that heavy of a device it's a 20 uh 26 650 single battery um device wood stab wood bam yeah 331.5 look at that and this is an empty tank by the way that's what i would prefer in terms of overall weight let's go and compare it to something like the drag vupu drag internal battery 187 Go and grab this again 183 very similar with just a mod no tank nothing like that on it so you can see how light this thing is let's go and grab this shitty door panel 12 grams it's basically 13 grams which is almost um a each gram you can look at as a paper clip so 13 14 paper clips let's go and weigh the device without the tank weigh the device without the batteries Add the battery door. 80 grams. It feels like I'm going to crush this. Like my dick is more durable than this when it's soft than this is when it's fucking plastic. It's garbage. Fake ass carbon fiber on the exterior. It does not look good. This is like a pale shitty blue. It's almost like they didn't take any fucking time in designing. You can see the, the seams. Let's go and pop these in real quick. You can see the seams where it was inject molded. That's the type of shit I don't like. Like, it's just fucking inject molded all into one piece. Oh, it is garbage feeling. I wish, I wish there was a way for me to express to you guys the way that it feels. Look at this. Look at that. That sideways action is not supposed to happen. Let's go and take a look at the button. Look at this. You know what? I was going to go through this mod inside and out. I don't think I'm even going to do that. I wouldn't fuck this with your dick. Let's go ahead and quickly run through the menu so you guys see the features. One, two, three, four, five. It's off. One, two, three, four, five. She's on. I like that little uh, graphic there. Let's go and click the minus and the positive. Power is locked. I do like that feature. Let's see if it still fires. 
One, two, three. There we go, variable wattage mode, nickel, titanium, so on and so forth. You got all of your uh, temp control. I'm glad that the ramp up is on there, this DVW mode and the TCR mode as well, but I tell you what, it's just not something I'm willing to trust on this bad boy. Like if it doesn't feel like they've taken any amount of time in terms of just the production of it and just the execution of this device. Like you can even see how uneven this panel is. The 510, shit, the 510 panel right here. You see this right here? You see that little seam? and how it gets bigger on this side. That right there tells me as soon as you drop this, that's gonna be one of the failure points. Oh my gosh. Oh, I bet I could fucking just rip this apart. I don't wanna do it just cause I don't want the liquid everywhere. Okay, some other truckers. Now with that said, let's go and get back to regular view and then we'll go ahead and see if we can't put a BB holder to the front and back of this thing. Mm. Now my final summation is this, the Smowan Tigers kit is not to be fucked with. Um, look, I, I'm not I'm not trying to be a dick whatsoever at all. I'm just sick of cheapness of mods. Like, the, it seems like the past year or so, the only thing companies are caring about is profit margin. Now look, I'm a businessman. Profit margin is important. That's something that keeps, you know, companies afloat, that keeps employees, that keeps everybody happy. But there's a, there's a difference between making a profit and making a poor product in the hopes of just doing a cash grab. I'm not trying to say this is just a cash grab. What I am trying to say is they're trying to compete with the Augvate VX200. It seems like, that's what it looks like. And then the Nunu, all these other tanks that are disposable. It seems like they're trying to get into that realm. Basically, they made just a shitty rendition of all of those other ones. And those are already shitty devices. They're already shitty tanks, uh, shitty quality as it is. Now, Smowet has a, it, it's not necessarily that they've tarnished their name. It's not, because I know what Smowat's capable of doing. Smowat has, has made some extremely impressive devices. The Carrot is a perfect example. Uh, the, the, what the fuck is the other one? The S8 is a solid pod system. One of my favorite mods of all time that I know I get shit for, but I don't give a fuck. It's one of my favorites. The RA Box. The Robox. The Robox. The Smowat RA Box was one of my favorite devices of all time. I love the way that thing looked. I liked the way that it performed. It wasn't the perfect performer. It wasn't great. It wasn't a phenomenal. It was a good performer. Had a light bulb battery. All that stuff. Smowat has come up with some cool ass products. This is not one of them. I'm extremely impressed by the flavor of the tank at 50 watts, 0.21 ohms. It says the highest it should be going is point four. Look at this. Just in that 20 minutes, uh, 20 minute review, I'm almost depleted out of that tank. Two milliliters is just not big enough on a sub ohm tank, in my opinion, to be a viable choice or, or a viable option. If you wanted to purchase these separately, uh, if you owned a shop and use it for testers, be my guess. It gives an extremely accurate flavor in terms of the liquid, but that's about it. I wouldn't trust this as a daily vape. I just wouldn't. I don't like products that are that cheap. I drop shit on a constant basis. This is a three-year-old device. I paid $180 for it. Uh, my homeboy Josh is the one that fixed it in terms of replacing the battery. With that said though, I've dropped this thing so many times. I, there's no way I could ever put a number on, on how many times I've dropped it. So 200 bucks has lasted me three years, over three years. That's the kind of quality that I'm used to. That's the kind of quality I like. Even the Wizmac, this piece of shit right here feels way fucking better than this does, especially because I mean, just use using harder plastic is going to do that. This is one of the most cheap, feeling plastics I've ever seen in my entire life. But with that said, I don't recommend it. I don't want to spend any more time at it, my ninja kitties. Bitch, it's okay, smell the truck is done. With that being said, I want to tell you that I appreciate you for vaping with Thesis. It is your boy Thesis. I'm out. Mm. So we can go ahead and judge based on this that Smow Ant circuitry is pretty fucking strong. Right to the center. And it still didn't make it through. That is mind blowing to me. Whew.